Welcome back to the channel. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out my review of the Odin handheld and I will leave links in the description below. Now the Odin is an awesome handheld, but there was just one problem that I had with it and that was the L1 R1 button issue. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that in this video. Now I'm not making this video to criticize AYN, nor am I trying to brush off any criticism. What I wanna actually do is actually go over some of those community updates from AYN and do a bit of a teardown on the Odin, have a look inside and take a look at what the problem is. And that way for people who have purchased the Odin, you'll know what to expect with the issue. And for people who are thinking about purchasing the Odin, we'll go over some of those design changes coming up in the second batch of orders. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get all of my gaming videos. So in AYN's week 24 update on February 19, 2022, they discussed the L1 R1 shoulder button issue in quite some detail. Now I'm not here for the drama or trying to defend or criticize AYN either way. I really just wanna help you guys as much as possible. And I know sometimes when a lot of time is spent covering an issue, it can actually look like it's a bigger deal than it actually is. And I don't really wanna give that impression because I think for a lot of people, they won't have a problem with their handheld and this problem might only exist for a small number of people. So that said, hopefully with this video, you guys will understand what's going on and manage yourselves accordingly. So let's go through the update. In part A, AYN said in about 5% of the units, the FPC connector on the controller board is not connected well with the incoming ribbon cable. So essentially the controller boards are separate here and either the ribbon is not connected or the controller board might even be lopsided so that there's no input from L1 R1. This should be a pretty easy fix if you already have your Odin. You do have to open up your Odin to fix it. So just connect the ribbon and make sure the controller board is connected properly. And this should also be an easy fix for their quality control as well. Now part B, some rubber pads under the L1 R1 shoulder buttons are not thick enough to buffer the input pressure. Now I wasn't exactly sure where the rubber pad is, but it might be this white plastic looking part inside the L1 button. This is supposed to be what it looks like and what might be a cross section of the rubber pad. So we're jumping ahead a little bit, but they made it a bit thicker on their new design. Now Parsi, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by this comment, but it sounds like there was an issue during assembly. And so it's not sitting perfectly. And I believe quality of control of assembly should fix this, which is why I don't particularly like being an early adopter because there'll definitely be some growing pains in a learning process with the first batch of assembly of units. Part D is an important one. Essentially they're saying at some point if you put enough force onto the L1 R1 buttons, it will eventually fail. And I think they bring up a really good point because pressing the buttons too hard can break them. Then the question becomes, well, how hard is too hard? And I think that's interesting because as I was playing, I was very conscious of how much pressure I was putting on the shoulder buttons. AYN says it can stand up to five kilograms, but how much pressure is that exactly? For a game where you're accessing menus with the shoulder buttons, I don't think it's that big of an issue because you're not usually under pressure to get into the menu as fast as possible. But something like Crazy Taxi or a racing game using the shoulder buttons, the need to be very exact with accelerating and decelerating means I can put more force on the buttons. So to be perfectly honest, I don't know how hard you would need to press down to break the tack switch or the controller board or the rubber pad. So my advice is just to be a little bit more careful. Even if I did a full failure test on the L1 R1 button, I don't think that helps anyone that much. And I think the only useful indicator is if they stand up over time. Now I do think looking at this design, there does need to be some support underneath this button to take away some of the force from the tack switch and the controller board. So if you look at the switch light, there's a spring supporting the L1 R1 button on the tack switch. And there's also plastic, which is part of the case itself that supports the button. And I think the switch light design is superior here. And with the Odin, it's just one of those things, given it's the first handheld, there's probably lots of things that could have been fixed if there were more testers. So to finish with this update, as I mentioned in the review video, if you're in the first 1200 orders, you may have some quality control issues as we've talked about, and there should be less quality control issues after the 1200th order in the first batch. If you have a unit from the first batch, as I said, you should try to be a little bit more careful using the L1 R1 buttons. If you're not happy with the situation, you can email AYN and talk about how you want to resolve the issue, whether you want to send the unit back to get repaired or get a refund. 
Now for anyone purchasing after the Indiegogo campaign on their Indiegogo website, you are an in-demand customer and you'll be in the second batch of orders. They should start shipping at the end of March and they'll include some improvements to the design of the L1R1 buttons and they talked about this in a second update on February the 28th. Firstly, they've added extra support to the casing for the L1R1 button, particularly the one on the right hand side, which stops the button from being pressed too far down. Now you don't want to press down too hard, otherwise you might break that support as well. So again, even if you have a design like the switch light, you still have to be careful. There's added rubber pad thickness, which I believe is the wide piece under the L1R1 button. The shoulder button has also been improved and made stronger as well. They've also redesigned the L2R2 housing, though I'm not exactly sure what issue they're referring to, though they are saying it's an improvement on the old one. Now for anyone that's had issue with their L1R1 buttons, there is a repair kit with L2R2 housing piece, L1R1 shoulder button with rubber pad, two controller boards and tools to fix the issue yourself and they'll be shipping that out pretty shortly. That's it for this one. I hope that gave you a bit more of an understanding on the L1R1 button issue. And if you liked it or found it helpful, make sure to leave a like and I'll be doing more content on the Odin. So make sure to subscribe as well and I'll see you guys in the next one.